Hey everyone, welcome to another episode. I hope your week's been going good. For this week's episode, I'm gonna talk a bit about like, how do you know when your colors feel right in early stages and how do you create mood and atmosphere in your painting? I got a great question from Moro Dora asking similar, uh, how do you go about it and how do you paint your light and shadows? And what I wanted to do is paint in a scene where a girl at a train station and then I changed the light of day of it to later in the afternoon. I, we started early morning and ended late afternoon. Uh, I thought it was pretty fun to paint and I want to share some of my thought process behind that. If this is something you're interested in, I hope you enjoy this episode or if you simply want to improve your colors. So let's start, let's start painting, shall we? So the first thing I kind of want to start with is just blocking out some lines to try and figure out the scene itself. The idea was actually inspired by an article I read a long time ago in Japan about a train station that runs only for one person. There is this girl in a high school and they decided to keep, she was the only one who takes the train through the station. So they only run, uh, it comes and picks her up in the morning and closes at night and they didn't want to shut down the station because it was the only way for her of transporting from and to school. So I kind of wanted, uh, that was kind of inspiration for it. Uh, and blocking in, uh, once I got the drawing done, I started blocking in the shadows. And I'm trying to add shadows of things we can't even see in the image. So as you can see on the left, I'm adding a lot of shadows, even though we don't see anything ca creating the shadow, there's something outside the frame itself that is casting it. And I think that's something you can think about as well whenever you do your paintings is, you can suggest things that are outside the, the frame of the image just to add a bit more interest because I wanted to have, I wanted to add some more darker value on the side and on the right so we can frame the character in the center because the whole painting is based around her being in the middle. Once I feel comfortable with the shadow that I have and the general drawing, I feel more, uh, relaxed in adding colors into the image because I kind of have the big questions answered and I kind of want to also break down the image into essentially two layers. We're going to have the the foreground elements, the sky, the the ground, the train station on one section and we're going to have the sky on a separate one and just kind of paint it flat. Uh, sometimes we overlap things when we're painting early on it kind of doesn't matter we're just blocking in things anyway so I like being able to be loose but separating out those two makes it a bit easier because we're going to have some things overlapping in the sky and I think having some sort of layer management always tends to make the process easier. Something also that I did for this image which I usually don't do is like I put more time into the drawing phase uh, because I knew I was going to have to reuse the image in a different phase so I kind of there's certain things I really had to figure out and I really wanted to center everything on the character. So even the railing, the, the train house, the cables, it all goes into centralize the focus on a character because that's our selling point. Essentially this girl, she's waiting at this train station. She's waiting for the train to come and pick her up. You know, it's, it's only there for her to come and pick up. So I, I wanted to put all the focus to her. And that's my main focal point for the painting itself. So as we're blocking a bunch of things, I'm trying to keep it fairly loose. I'm also just trying to think of how to, how to sculpting the clouds and stuff, uh, adding some details here and there, but essentially we have the overall image set. We kind of have a general feel for the light. And as you can see on the right, you know, sometimes I like to have a much looser base for my painting and just stop painting straight away. But for this one, again, because I knew the end result was going to be uh, very different from my usual paintings. I kind of wanted to invest more time early on and something I can encourage as well to think about is Based on the outcome that you're thinking about and what you want to try and achieve If it's going to be a shorter painting you don't need to invest that much time early on But if it's something you're going to spend a lot more time on you probably want to answer a lot more questions early because Otherwise you're gonna to have to deal with it later. So with the base of our painting done It's time to paint more afternoon type of lighting I had to use some inspirations. So I was referencing one of my older paintings on the top right. But now, like, you know, it's a bit tricky trying to get changing the whole scheme of a painting to a different type of lighting scenario. Um, and But I, it's something I'm trying to do gradually. I'm not trying to do any major changes, but there's certain things I know I want to do. So I'm slowly massaging things back and forth. I saw playing with some adjustments layer where like an adjustment layer, if you're not familiar with it, it's like there's, there's a lot of different ones in Photoshop where you can tweak, for instance, all the purples in your image or all your darks in your image gets more purple. There's a lot of different ways you can achieve it with color balance, 
gradient maps. There's many different ways of going about it, but I'm slowly adding different things. I'm adding the sun behind the character, trying a bunch of few things. And like you keep seeing me going back and forth between some adjustment layers and turning it off because the adjustment layer is helpful to a degree. But it also has to add other things to make it sure it feels natural. So slowly by slowly, we're adding more stuff. I'm adding more desaturation, you know. It's not as saturated anymore. The sun is way far behind the character. So she's going to be popping out a bit more. Uh, overall, darkening down the values, popping in some highlights in the sun, and just slowly building that up over time, just to try and make it feel more normal. Because if we, for instance, were to jump straight away into adding all the contrast and stuff, I would find it too difficult to do it, and it would probably stress me up. But having that reference I had early on, it kind of gives me my vision of what I'm trying to achieve. So I know where I'm going for, it's just about getting there and not getting too worried, you know. It's just step by step where we go about it. Uh, but overall, the thing I kind of want to do is mute down the palette way more, you know, adding some more desaturated colors in the image and focusing on, on the saturation all behind the character. And I really had to bring in some warmer light to balance out uh, uh, the whole thing with a bit more reddish tone because that's kind of like how you get the sunset feel. Uh, usually it's like not as extreme, but I wanted to push it. Uh, and some of those grays in the sky as well. And I also like, as you can see in the back, the red, it's kind of blooming across. It doesn't have a hard cut line. And it's it's like, I don't know if it's a natural effect or, or whenever you take pictures, but it's like a blooming effect. You see it often in games. It just looks really cool and like juicy. And I just, <laughs> I just want to do it. I don't know if it actually does that in reality. It's just something I enjoy doing painting wise because I feel like it overemphasizes certain things. And it's just kind of fun to paint uh, with your airbrushes and stuff. Uh, but I feel like we're getting pretty close, you know. I actually was drawn a bit between the idea of turning it into more of a horror direction, like a horror themed. But then I thought on the original story I was trying to go for, it's much more lighter. So I was thinking like the first one was maybe like when she's leaving to school and this is like on her way back home from school or kind of similar, you know. Um, and I felt like that was working way better than trying turning into a horror theme. I'd probably do that for maybe a future episode. I really love horror books. Uh, but I think that's the general process. I think it's a bit tricky sometimes when you want to add a different color or lighting into your image but thinking a bit ahead of time and having a clear goal and setting up yourself a bit more for uh, planning early in the early stages can really make it smoother and don't get stressed up just step by step you massage it in and eventually you're going to get there you just got to have your goal for the lighting you want to go for and with that we can wrap this episode up we've explored two different lighting scenarios i hope it was helpful in some way and that you start maybe experimenting with this in your own work so thank you so much for watching again and have a wonderful day Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making it. Uh, be sure to let me know in the comment section below your thoughts if you have any other questions. Uh, and I put up an episode each Friday, so be sure to subscribe to be notified when it comes out. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you next time. Bye.